Okay, ayah number 100. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wasabiqoon al-awwaloon min al-muhajirin wal-ansar wal-lazina tabaoohum bi-ihsan radiyallahu anhum wa radu anhu. And the first forerunners, the first ones, the forerunners among the muhajirin and the ansar. And not just them, but those who followed them with good conduct as well. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Him. Now another character is being displayed before us. One is of the hypocrite and one is of the sincere believer. But which believers? As-sabiqoon. As-sabiqoon is a plural of as-sabiq. From the root letters, seen baqaf, sabaqa. Sabaqa literally means to get ahead, to proceed, to go forward. You understand? To get ahead. Like for example, two people or three people are walking together. One of them gets ahead of the rest. Similarly, the word sabaq is used for lesson. Because with each lesson, you get ahead in your course. Hmm? So as-sabiqoon, those who go ahead of who? Of others. In what? In iman and also in ita'ah. In iman and also in obedience. The first ones, the forerunners, the pioneers, they got ahead of everybody else. And they weren't just those who got ahead of everybody else, but they also are al-awwaloon. Al-awwaloon is a plural of awwal. Awwal is first one. So they didn't just get ahead of everybody else, but they were the first ones to do what they did. They didn't just win the race, but they were the first ones to do what they did. Nobody else did this before them. What is it that they got ahead of before others? Or what is it that they did first before anyone else? Iman. Obedience. It is said that sabqa, being ahead of others, is in three ways. First of all, in sifa, in attribute. What does that mean? That a person develops an attribute before others. You understand? So, as-sabiqoon al-awwaloon, what does it mean? Those who became Muslim first. So those Sahaba who became Muslim when? In Mecca. Similarly, Sabqa is also with regards to time, with regards to Zaman. It is to do something before the other in time. Thirdly, it is also with regards to Makan, place. That for example, when a person reaches the destination first, when a person reaches the place before others. So, as-sabiqoon, al-awwaloon, who are they? They are those companions of the Prophet ﷺ who were the first ones to become Muslim. First ones to become Muslim. Whether they were the first ones to become Muslim in Mecca, or they were the first ones to become Muslim in Medina. You might say that those who became Muslim in Mecca became Muslim much before those who became Muslim in Medina. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says over here, مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ Because they were the first ones, how? That as soon as they learned, they accepted. As soon as they found out, they accepted. Yes, it got to them later on, but they didn't delay once it came to them, once they found out about it. So first of all, it refers to those companions who became Muslim first. Secondly, as-sabiqoon al-awwaloon also refers to those companions who were present at Badr, according to some. Those who were present where? At the battle of Badr. Because the battle of Badr was very soon after the hijrah. And it was the first battle. Similarly, it has been said that it refers to those companions who prayed towards both the qiblas. Remember initially when the Prophet ﷺ migrated to Medina, he was told to pray towards Jerusalem. And then he was told to pray towards Mecca. So those who prayed in both directions, in the direction of Jerusalem as well as in the direction of Mecca. It is also said that as sabiqun al-awwalun refers to those who were present at Hudaybiyah. At the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. So you can 
understand as sabiqun al-awwalun as the popular sahaba, the well-known sahaba. Whether they were of the muhajirin or the ansar. Those are the ones who are well-known, isn't it? There were so many people who went along the Prophet wasallam at the Battle of Tabuk. 30,000. So many amongst them. But which ones are we most familiar with? Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, isn't it? So they are as-sabiqun al-awwalun. They became Muslim first. They were present at Badr. They prayed towards both the Qiblas and they were present at Hudaybiyah. We learn in Surah Al-Hadid, ayah number 10, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يستوي منكم من أنفق من قبل الفتح وقاتل أولئك أعظم درجة من الذين أنفقوا من بعد وقاتلوا Not equal among you are those who spent before the conquest of Mecca and also fought before the conquest. And those who did so afterwards. Those who spent and fought before the conquest of Mecca, they're not the same as those who fought and spent after the conquest of Mecca. Those who spent before, they are greater in degree than they who spent afterwards and fought. So as al-awwalun refers to those companions from among the muhajireen and the ansar who were the first ones to become Muslim and serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the muhajireen, from those who migrated from Mecca to Medina, of the most familiar ones to us are who? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Umar, Uthman, Ali, Zaid, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, Bilal, Mus'ab, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum radiallahu anhum. And from the Ansar, those who helped the muhajirin when they migrated to them, from amongst them, especially it is said that the Asabiqun al awwalun from the Ansar are those who became Muslim even before the Prophet Sallallahu migrated to Medina. Those who became Muslim before he did Hijrah. Inshallah you will learn in Sirah that before the Prophet Sallallahu migrated there was a bay'ah that he made with the people of Medina and it's known as the bay'ah of Aqaba. They had come for Hajj and they had made a bay'ah with the Prophet Sallallahu so from the Ansar, it refers to those who were present over there at the first Bayar Aqaba. And according to others, it is those Ansar who became Muslim at the hands of Mus'ab ibn Umair and Abu Zurara radiallahu anhuma. That before the Prophet migrated, he sent some companions. Amongst them were Mus'ab and Abu Zurara. And they went into da'wah in Medina they did hijrah over there first basically. And many became Muslim at their hands. For example, I mentioned to you about Amr ibn Jamuh. I'm sure you have heard about his story that his sons, they became Muslim at the hand of Musab ibn Umair. And Amr ibn Jamuh, he had an idol known as Manat. And before he would do anything, he would always consult that idol eventually to make him understand as to how the idol does not know anything, what did the sons do? Hmm? They threw it in the dump and they tied it to a dead dog and they did many things to make the father understand. And eventually he became a Muslim. Hmm? So from the Ansar, it is those who became Muslim at the hands of who? Mus'ab ibn Umair. So those who became Muslim first, those who sacrificed for the deen first, before anyone else did, before it became the trend. Because when they became Muslim, when they fought, when they spent, it was not the trend. Not at all. It was a very strange thing to do. It was a very odd thing to do. They were the first ones to do it. وَالَّذِينَ And those people who اتَّبَعُوهُمْ Who followed them bi ihsan with ihsan. What does it mean by following them with Ihsan? That those people who later joined them in Medina. Those people who later joined them in Medina. For example, we learn about Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. He came and joined later in Medina. Similarly, those Muslims who had migrated to Abyssinia, although they are of the first ones to become Muslim, but later on they came and joined the Muslims in Medina. So, الَّذِينَ تَبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ is first of all understood as those who later joined them. Secondly, it is said, الَّذِينَ تَبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ It refers to those who came after them. The next generation. 
So who does it refer to? The tabi'een. The tabi'oon. And it's derived from the word taba'a. Alladina taba'uhum. What does taba'a mean? To follow. So who is a tabi'i? Who is a believer? And he gets to see the sahaba. So he is a believer while he is with the sahaba. Even if he's met and stayed with only one sahabi, even that person is a tabi'i. So alladina taba'uhum bi ihsan. And it's not just that next generation, but it's a generation after and the generation after up until the day of judgment. As long as they follow the way of the companions, how? With ihsan. Meaning they do what the sahaba did. They have ikhlas and they also do amal in the best way, with the right conviction for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So such people... رضي الله عنهم Allah is happy with them Why? Because of their obedience to Him And what does it mean by Allah is happy with them? That He has accepted their deeds And He has approved of their deeds And He has forgiven them رضي الله عنهم In Surah Waqi'ah What do we learn? والسابقون السابقون أولئك المقربون Because Allah is happy with them They will be مقربون Brought close to Allah and it's not just that Allah is happy with them, but waradu anhu, that they're also pleased with Him. They're also happy with Allah. How? That they're happy with the reward that Allah has given them. And they're happy with the blessings that Allah has bestowed upon them. And they're happy with the blessings that Allah has bestowed upon them in the dunya, and those blessings which Allah has promised them in the hereafter. So in the dunya, the success that Allah granted them. The izzah, the honor that Allah granted them with Islam. And in the hereafter, the reward that Allah has promised them. All of that is what? They are happy with Him for all these blessings. Similarly, they are happy with Him for the commands that He has given them. They don't say that's not fair. They accept them willingly, happily. Radu anhu. They are happy with Him, with His decisions. وَأَعَدَّ لَهُمْ jannat, And He has prepared for them gardens. What gardens? Tajri. تَحْتَهَا الْأَنْهَارِ Underneath which rivers flow. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا Abiding therein eternally. ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزِ الْعَظِيمِ And that is a great success. Everyone wants to be successful. Everyone wants to be saved. But what is the way to success according to this ayah? That if you want the pleasure of Allah, do not wait for others to do it first. To try out the commands first. Do not wait for others. If you know that something is from Allah, then trust Allah. Be happy with His commands. Be happy with His decisions. And do it. Even if you're the only one. Even if you're the first one to do it. Generally we become hesitant if we're the first ones to try something out. Isn't it? Because we don't know who to look up to. How do we know what possible loss there is, what possible benefit there is. We like to see if other people have done it before us. But the ones who do something the first time, before anyone else has done it, they're the ones who get the most benefit, and they're the ones who are most confident about that as well. Like for example, generally what happens if there's a new product, or if there's you know, a new software or something, then what do people do? They wait for other people to try it out and test it. And then based on other people's tests and experiences, then they will make a decision. Do I want to do it or not? But sometimes what happens? By the time you get your hands on it, it's too late. It becomes old as well. Hmm? If you're the first one to get it, if you're the first one to do it, you are an opportunistic person. You are taking advantage of an opportunity. And perhaps the benefit that you will get is much more than anyone else. Someone once mentioned a story of how there was a man in India a long time ago when there was this new kind of a car that was going to be brought to India. And when he found out, he said, okay, these cars are also going to get messed up, so people have to get them repaired. So what did he do? He went abroad to get training as to how to repair those cars. And when he came back, he had the first business of repairing those cars. 
and he got the most advantage. Everybody would come to him. So this is what? Grasping the opportunity at the right time. Because when you do that, you benefit the most compared to anyone else. People will follow you later on, but they will not get the same benefit as you do. But such people are few. Such daring people are few. And for these few as well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared a great reward. وَمِمَّنْ حَوْلَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ And among those around you of the Bedouins are who? Munafiqoon. Why is this ayah placed over here? In the midst of the discussion of the hypocrites, of the munafiqoon? Because the munafiqoon, they would wait for other people. And they didn't accept Islam immediately. They accepted Islam later on. Later on. Seeing, okay, what benefits do they get? What harm do they incur? What does Allah say? The sabiqoon al-awwaloon, they are ahead of everybody else. From the muhajirin and the ansar. Like for example, there were some people who didn't become Muslim. But later on, when the Muslims were successful at Badr, then they became Muslim. Or after the conquest of Makkah, then there were many tribes amongst Arabia who lived in the desert who became Muslim at that time. After the conquest. That's when they became Muslim, out of fear. For worldly reasons. Their level is not the same as those who became Muslim first. وَمِمَّنْ حَوْلَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ مُنَافِقُونَ Amongst the desert dwellers who are around you, meaning around Medina, who live outside of Medina, in the surrounding areas of the city, not too far away, amongst the Arab are who? Munafiqun. وَمِنْ أَهْلِ الْمَدِينَةِ And also from the people of Medina. So there are Munafiqun, not just outside Medina, but also inside Medina. From the previous ayah, don't think that the munafiqun are only outside of Medina. They're also inside Medina. And these munafiqun, these hypocrites, maradu ala nifaq. They have become accustomed to hypocrisy. They have become accustomed to it. Maradu is from the root letters, meem, ra, dal, marad. This is not marad. Marad is what? Disease. This is marad, dal. And basically it means something that is smooth and slippery. Something that is smooth and slippery. Just imagine a rock that is smooth. And if it's wet and you step on it, you will slip. Why? Because it's extremely smooth. Similarly, just imagine a floor that is very smooth. It's very easy to slip on it. right? So it's something that is smooth and slippery. When does something become smooth and slippery? When it has been rubbed and polished a lot. Isn't it? And in order to rub it, in order to polish it, don't you need a lot of skill? You need to do it over and over again. And when something becomes slippery, it's difficult to grasp it. It's difficult to hold on to it. For example, you pick up a rock that is wet, that is slippery. You pick it up, it's very easy to drop it. It's very easy that it will fall out of your hand. Similarly, a glass. Maybe it's got soap on it. You hold it, it will fall out of your hands. So, maradu is when something or when someone becomes an expert in what he does. He becomes an expert. He becomes used to it. He becomes accustomed to it. He persists on it. He's so used to it. He's so good at it that it's so difficult to detect it. It's difficult to find it. It's difficult to catch it. Like for example, a rock that is slippery, that is smooth, a glass that is slippery, smooth. Can you hold it? No. It will fall out of your hands. Similarly, these munafiqeen from outside of Medina and inside of Medina, they're so skilled at their nifaq that it's difficult to point them out. It's difficult to realize that they have nifaq. How? They would come to the Prophet ﷺ swearing oaths. If a person does something wrong and you're like, okay, this person has done something wrong, perhaps he has nifaq. Especially at the time of the Prophet. We're no one to judge today. But at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. But they would come and they would say such things. They would swear oaths that it would be so difficult to figure out. So what is this person? Is he a Muslim? Is he not a Muslim? You get confused. 
maradu ala nifaq they have become accustomed to it they are so used to it they are so good at it that it's difficult to detect them it's difficult to catch them it's difficult to find them maradu ala nifaq also the word marada is to be rebellious what does it mean to be rebellious of the same root is shaytanum marid shaytanum marida so maradu ala nifaq they have become firm and rebellious they have revolted they have persisted in their hypocrisy la ta'lamuhum you don't even know them they're so cunning they're so well hidden that you do not know them what does it show that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam despite the fact that he received wahi he did not know the unseen he did not know the unseen allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed him whatever he wished to inform him and the prophet himself did not know about everything la ta'lamuhum you don't know them nahnu na'lamuhum we know them because allah has kul ilm unlike anyone else and if a person says that the prophet knows the unseen as well that is actually shirk la ta'lamuhum nahnu na'lamuhum sanu'adhibuhum soon we will punish them marratayn twice we are going to punish them allah is going to punish these people twice why twice because their crime is much more right they have persisted on their nifaq they do actions of nifaq but then they hide their hypocrisy with their tongue with the words they say or sometimes with the actions that they do sanu'adhibuhum marratayn because their crime is greater therefore their punishment is also going to be twice thumma yuraduna ila adabin azim then they will be returned to a great punishment what does it mean by this double punishment this double punishment it refers to first of all punishment in the dunya with what fadiha that their hypocrisy is exposed and they're embarrassed they're humiliated in this world their hypocrisy is exposed they try to cover it up but allah will punish them how by exposing their hypocrisy similarly adab in dunya is for example the masaib the difficulties the calamities that they suffer in their wealth in their children the illnesses that they suffer because for a believer when he suffers a difficulty it is a kafara for his sins it is an expiation for his sins he gets more reward for his sabr but a munafiq for him it's a punishment a person who does not believe for him the difficulties that he goes through they are a punishment and what is the second punishment that is a punishment in the barzakh it refers to adab al qabr sanu'adhibuhum marratayn punishment in the grave in the barzakh and then after these two punishments thumma yuraduna ila adab azim then they will be returned to a great punishment So for such munafiqun there is punishment at every level in dunya in the grave and also in the hereafter Because for some when they suffer punishment in the dunya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves them from punishment in the akhirah If they suffer punishment in the grave Allah saves them from punishment in the akhirah But for them there is punishment in dunya the grave and also in the akhirah So in this ayah another category of hypocrites is mentioned those who are outside as well as inside of Medina their hypocrisy was exposed how they did not go to battle and they would come and swear oaths they would come and say such things in order to hide their hypocrisy but their hypocrisy was exposed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this was their punishment in the dunya وَآخَرُونَ And there are others. آخَرُونَ is a plural of آخَر. Meaning there are other than the munafiqeen, another people, besides the munafiqeen, who stayed behind. From where? From Tabuk. They did not go forth for the battle, for the expedition. So far, what have we been learning? The people who stayed behind, who were they? Munafiqoon. Whether from inside Medina or outside Medina. But Allah says it wasn't just the munafiqeen who stayed behind just as it wasn't just the true believers who had gone forth there were also munafiqeen who went so over here wa akharuna and there is another group of people who 
اِعْتَرَفُوا بِذُنُوبِهِمْ Who have acknowledged their mistakes, their sins. They have realized the wrong that they have done. They have admitted their mistakes. And because they admit it, they have improved themselves. Earlier we read that when the Prophet ﷺ returned, the munafiqun, what did they do? يَعْتَذِرُونَ يَحْلِفُونَ مُعَذِّرُونَ Presenting false excuses. Swearing oaths. They weren't willing to change themselves. But there is another group of people who اِعْتَرَفُوا بِذُنُوبِهِمْ Who confessed, who acknowledged their mistakes. Which mistake is this referring to? Of تَخَلُّف Of staying behind, of staying back. What have they done? خَلَطُوا They have mixed. خَلَطُوا From the root letters خَا لَام طَا They have mixed. عَمَلًا صَالِحًا Righteous deeds. وَآخَرَ And others سَيِّئًا Evil. They have performed such deeds that are very good. And they have also performed such deeds that are evil. عَسَى اللَّهُ It is hoped that Allah أَن يَتُوبَ عَلَيْهِمْ That He will turn in mercy upon them. Why? Because إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. This is another group of people who are not munafiq, nor are they سَابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ They are not munafiq, and they are also not سَابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ They didn't go for the battle of the book. They didn't go when it was necessary for them to go. But they're also not munafiqi. And it happens with many people. Many people. That it's not that they're munafiq, they have nifaq inside their heart. Inside they have kufur, on the outside they're pretending to be believers. No. Inside they know they're believers. But in their actions sometimes, they pray salah with khushur. And other times they pray salah without khushur. Happens with people. Similarly, one action they're doing only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another action they're doing and all of a sudden they feel fear of people. So just because once a person feels fear of people, you will label that person as a munafiq or he will consider himself as a pure munafiq? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they are another group. But when will they be successful? When they admit their mistake. اِعْتَرَفُوا بِذُنُوبِهِمْ Because if we keep presenting excuses... I cannot pray with khushur because of this and this and this reason. I cannot do this because of this and this reason. If a person does not confess his mistakes, then how will he improve? He will not improve. Look at the way this ayah ends. Asa Allahu. Hopefully Allah will forgive them. Why? Because they have admitted their mistake. So the only way of being successful is that you admit your mistakes. Ibn Abbas who said that wa akharuna refers to Abu Lubaba. And some of his friends. Abu Lubaba, who was a companion of the Prophet ﷺ, and some of his friends. Who stayed away from the battle of the book and the Messenger of Allah. When the Messenger of Allah returned from the battle, this group, Abu Lubaba, and five, seven, or nine with him, so there's a difference of opinion as to how many exactly they were, according to some five, seven, or nine. What did they do? They tied themselves to the pillars of the masjid. And they refused to let Anyone untie them except the Messenger of Allah. Nobody is going to untie us except the Messenger of Allah. We're not going to go from here. We're not going to move from here. We're not going to release ourselves until Allah forgives us. And what is a sign of that? That the Messenger of Allah will come and release us. And they stayed in that state until this ayah was revealed. عَسَى اللَّهُ أَن يَتُوبَ عَلَيْهِمْ These believers, they accepted their mistake openly. They realized that we should have gone, but we didn't go. And this is a mistake on our part. They didn't present excuses. They admitted, they realized. Before they were punished, what did they do? They punished themselves. And a person who accepts his mistakes, he has humility. And a person who persists in the wrong that he's doing, he becomes arrogant. Al-Bukhari recorded that Samurai ibn Jundub, he said that the Messenger of Allah said to us, Last night, two angels came to me in a vision, in a dream, and took me to a city built with bricks made of gold and silver. We met some men who, part of their bodies were as handsome as you ever saw, and another part was as ugly as you ever saw. 
we read in this ayah, خَلَطُوا They have mixed good deeds and bad deeds. So the Prophet saw people who, part of their body, extremely beautiful, extremely handsome, extremely gorgeous, and another part, extremely ugly. The two angels, they ordered these men to go to a river and submerge themselves in it. They did that and they came back to us and the ugliness had gone away from them. Thus becoming the most beautiful form. The two said to me, This is a garden of Eden and this is your residence in it. The two said, meaning the angels, As for the men who had part of their body handsome and part ugly, they have mixed a deed that was righteous with another that was evil. They have mixed a deed that was righteous with a deed that is evil. But what is said? عَسَى اللَّهُ أَن يَتُوبَ عَلَيْهِمْ So Allah forgave them. Because when the word asa is used for Allah, it gives a meaning of hope, a strong hope. That definitely, inshallah, Allah will do this very soon. So we see that we make mistakes. And when we make mistakes, we dirty ourselves. We make ourselves dirty. We make ourselves look bad. This is why su is called su. From the same root is the word sawa. What is sawa? Corpse, a dead body, or the private part which should be hidden because it reveals the ugliness of a person. So when we commit sins, we are making ourselves ugly. Literally, we're making ourselves ugly. And it's only by the mercy of Allah that we will become beautiful again. How? If Allah forgives us. When will Allah forgive us? When we admit our mistakes. When we confess. If we don't and we become persistent, we become stubborn, we're only harming ourselves. So what is the solution for that? خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً Take from their wealth صَدَقَةً The Prophet is being instructed that when they have done this to themselves, they want to make sure they are forgiven. How do they make up for it? How do they make up for the wrong that they have committed? Take صدقة from their wealth. They should give in charity. Because when they give in charity, تطهرهم, you will purify them. How? Through the صدقة. تطهروا from the word تطهير. And تطهير is to purify something. Generally this word is to purify something from physical impurity. So you will cleanse them. From what? From the effect of the sin that they have committed. When they give sadaqa, they will be cleansed. The sins they have committed, they will be erased. We know that when a person commits a sin, it leaves a black mark on his heart. So when they give sadaqa, that black mark will be erased. What to him? And you will increase them. Biha with it. To is from tazkiyah. Tazkiyah also means what? Purification, But it does not just mean purification, it also means increase. It also means increase. So to tahiruhum, you will purify them. What to zakihim, and you will cause them increase. What does it mean by this? You will cause them increase. Meaning it will enable them to grow in their righteousness, in piety. It will enable them to avail future opportunities. They missed an opportunity. By not going to the book. But when they realized their mistake, they sought forgiveness, they gave sadaqa. What did the sadaqa do? It erased their sin. Tutahiruhum. And as a result of that, they will be able to increase in future, in their righteousness, in their piety. What zakihim biha? Wa salli alayhim. And also pray for them when they bring the sadaqa. And salli alayhim is not just that when they bring the sadaqah, pray for them, but it is also that pray for them when they die, meaning pray salatul janazah for them. Because for the munafiqeen, what was said? La tusalli, don't pray on them. But for these, salli alayhim. Why? Because inna salataka sakanul lahum. Indeed, your prayer is a reassurance for them. Wallahu samir and alim, and Allah is hearing and knowing. Sakan is from the root letter, seen kafnun. And what does sakan mean? That which comes to a stop, which becomes still after movement. So it's peace of mind, tranquility, reassurance. So your prayer is a means of satisfaction for them. That their tawbah has been accepted. That their tawbah has been accepted. Wallahu samir and alim, and Allah is hearing and He's also knowing. 
So in this verse, the Prophet has commanded that when they come to you to give sadaqah, take it from them. Do not say you are very sinful. You did something so bad, therefore your good deeds will not be accepted. No. When they're trying to make up, help them. So we see that if a person has done something wrong, and they're trying to improve, what is our duty? That we must encourage them. Not that we stop them. We encourage them. We motivate them. We help them. أَلَمْ يَعْلَمُوا Do they not know أَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ يَقْبَلُ التَّوْبَةَ عَنْ عِبَادِهِ That indeed Allah, He is the only one who accepts repentance from His servants. Who else will they go to? When they have made a mistake, who else will they go to? They cannot go to anyone. They have to turn to Allah. And when they turn to Allah seeking forgiveness, they should know that Allah accepts tawbah from His servants. وَيَأْخُذُ الصَّدَقَاتِ And He also accepts charities. When a person gives for the sake of Allah, Allah accepts it. وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ And Allah, only He is Tawab and Rahim. Why are these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned over here? What does Tawab show? Greatest acceptor of repentance. No matter how great your crime is, no matter how many your crimes are, Allah accepts repentance for them. As long as you repent to Him, you admit your mistake. وَقُلْ اِعْمَلُوا And say to them, اِعْمَلُوا Do amal. Again, it's not just your words that are going to be considered. You have to prove it through your actions. اِعْمَلُوا فَسَيَرَ اللَّهُ عَمَلَكُمْ Soon Allah will see your deeds. But it's not just enough to show your deeds to Allah. وَرَسُولُهُ And also His Messenger. وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ And also the believers. For the munafiqoon also, something similar was said. That Allah will observe your actions. For those who repent, for those who change their ways, same thing has been said. That even you have to do something. You have to prove your repentance. You have to show it. Allah, His Messenger, believers, all of them will observe your deeds. وَسَتُرَدُّونَ And soon you will be returned. إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ To the knower of the unseen and the witnessed. فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ And He will inform you of what you had been doing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our inward and outward. He knows with what sincerity do we admit our mistake. With what sincerity do we turn to Him. Allah knows. And He will inform us of the reality of our deeds. This was one group of people. There was another group as well. وَآخَرُونَ And there are others. Besides who? Besides the munafiqeen, besides those who stayed behind and sought forgiveness. Another group, who are they? مُرْجَوْنَ لِأَمْرِ اللَّهِ They have been deferred for the decision of Allah. مُرْجَوْنَ from the root letters, ra, jim, wa. Raja. What does raja mean? Hope. What does it mean? Hope. And irja is to defer. We learned earlier, أَرْجِئْ وَأَخَاهُ Defer him and his brother. Fir'aun was told by his mala. Defer the case of Musa and his brother. So irja is to defer. مُرْجَوْن Those whose matter has been deferred. So they have been deferred. Their matter has been delayed. For what? The decision of Allah. Allah has not decided with regards to them. إِمَّا يُعَذِّبُهُمْ Either He is going to punish them. وَإِمَّا يَتُوبُ عَلَيْهِمْ Or He will turn in mercy to them. وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ And Allah is knowing and wise. So we see that there were four groups of people when it came to the battle of the book. One was of the believers who went. Another was of the hypocrites. Whether they went or they stayed back or they made excuses or they didn't even bother to show up. Then there was another group of people who did not go, but they were sincere believers. And they confessed their mistake. But there was another group of believers whose matter was deferred. Allah did not give a decision with regards to them immediately. Who were they? Three companions. And inshallah we will read about their case later on in the surah. They did not lag behind due to hypocrisy. They lag behind only because of procrastination. Maybe we'll go. We'll go someday. Soon we'll catch up with the Muslims. So their matter was also deferred. When they procrastinated, they were procrastinated with. 
Let's listen to the recitation. والسابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه وأعد لهم جنات وأعد لهم جنات تجري تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا ذلك الفوز العظيم ومن من حولكم من الأعراب منافقون ومن أهل المدينة مردوا على النفاق لا تعلمهم نحن نعلمهم سنعذبهم مرتين ثم يردون إلى عذاب عظيم وآخرون اعترفوا بذنوبهم خلطوا عملا صالحا وآخر سيئا عسى الله أن يتوب عليهم إن الله غفور رحيم خذ من أموالهم صدقة تطهرهم وتزكيهم بها وصل عليهم إن صلاتك سكن لهم والله سميع عليم أَلَمْ يَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ يَقْبَلُ التَّوْبَةَ عَنْ عِبَادِهِ وَيَأْخُذُ الصَّدَقَاتِ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ وَقُلْ اعْمَلُوا فَسَيَرَى اللَّهُ عَمَلَكُمْ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَسَتُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ وَآخَرُونَ مُرْجَوْنَ لِأَمْرِ اللَّهِ إِمَّا يُعَذِّبُهُمْ وَإِمَّا يَتُوبُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته